back. You've joined us on the Southern Motorway um, in some fairly reasonably heavy uh, rush hour traffic later on a Friday afternoon and we're going to be uh, spending the little point of this episode is to talk about lane splitting or lane filtering as some people might call it. Uh, first thing I should point out is that lane splitting is legal in New Zealand but under certain conditions and there is a degree of discretion um, that can be applied by uh, law enforcement uh, when observing the lane splitting. And I'm not just making this up as I go, it is in the road code. Um, you are allowed to pass on the right hand side of a vehicle as long as you stay within the same lane. It's not always possible on the motorway because some people hug the white line with their wheels, some cars I'm talking about, trucks as well. Uh, but generally people are reasonably flexible about how you get through. Um, you see we're passing a couple of police cars here and although we're not strictly speaking within the same lane as the cars we're passing on the right we are going pretty carefully and slowly and that's also one of the keys you can't be uh, traveling any faster they recommend than um, well, no more than 20 kilometers beyond the speed of the uh, traffic that you're uh, splitting past if you go faster than that you're likely to get a pulled up and uh, given a ticket for careless use, something like that, then that's really something you don't want as well. You're putting yourself at risk, yourself and other road users as well, so we're all trying to get home safely, um, best to just do it at a moderate speed. Now, in respect of lane splitting, I find it safer to be lane splitting on a motorbike than just trying to go nose to tail, imagining that you're a car and just, I'll just be going stop start here all the time because if you go and stop start with cars behind you there's just uh, I feel very vulnerable I would feel quite certain it's only going to end one way in a disaster with being hit from behind because some people they're not paying attention when they're behind you in a car and uh, lane splitting you've got control over your own destiny over who's going to hit you from behind not many people because they can't fit Having said that, you need to be aware all the time, looking behind you, looking around. Um, if you've got gaps to the right or left in front of you, well, you've got to be careful of those. Gaps are traps. If there's a gap, there's a car likely to be wanted to take that gap, so don't think that this is free, uh, free territory that you can occupy because that sometimes can end up biting you hard. Um, also, you don't need to be looking behind because, yeah, okay, cars can't fit, but bikes certainly can, and there's a lot of... Uh, motorbike guys, there's always going to be someone faster than you who's looking a lane split and I'm not there to lecture them and say bro you should slow down, I'm going to just move aside and let them go past if they're looking to uh, be flicking it through a bit quicker than me. I don't want to be holding anybody up from what they would normally be doing. Um, so yeah, you've got to be aware all the time and if you do all those things, well then you're going to have a, a positive experience. Having said that, I'm kind of glad I don't commute every day on the bike because this kind of thing, you do have to keep your wits about you all the time and it uh, can be a little bit draining. Uh, luckily when we hit this traffic we've only got about 40 something minutes to go to uh, get home back on the uh, far side of the North Shore so can't really complain too much. If you're only doing it now and again it's not really a problem. We've just emerged out of the Victoria Park Tunnel um, and heading along the St Mary's Bay uh, area which kind of leads on to the Auckland Harbour Bridge uh, which will be heading up very shortly and that will take us back onto the North Shore. Now it is set for um, evening commuter traffic at this point which means the uh, mobile lane barrier, this concrete thing to the right of me there uh, has moved across so we've now got five lanes traveling to the North Shore, three into the city so they adjust the traffic flow to make sure that more lanes are available for the uh, the greater load of traffic so there's five lanes in the morning heading into the city, five lanes in the evening heading out of the city. Uh, it's, uh, it's a way to try and keep traffic at least flowing you know, as well as it can, and you can see it works pretty good because we've all of a sudden got a whole lot of room here on the bridge 
um, after this when we get onto the other side and get back down to four and then three lanes we'll see that traffic once again tightens up and you've got to uh, once again move towards a, a lane splitting uh, situation. Well, a bit of background to this ride here. This is in fact the uh, the last few stages of our Kickdown Festival ride. Um, this is late on the Friday afternoon, having ridden back from riding around the Coromandel Loop. We're about 550 k's into our ride for the day at this point. Uh, on the way home, and I really did hope that we were going to strike a little bit less traffic than this on the way back, but this is what happens when you have a midweek ride and uh, schedule your return back into the city right in or about rush hour because at this point I think it was about five o'clock quarter past five so yeah traffic it is Auckland one and a half million people and a roading network that's uh, struggling under the load so what can you do about this stage I think I'm going to let this video just wind up and play out. Um, I can tell you there's about another 25 minutes of riding from this point. Pretty much the same as this, lane splitting all the way, stopping at a gas station, going home. It was a great day's riding. Anyway, time to uh, call it quits. Ride safe out there, take care, see you next week.